hello guys welcome to today's video and in today's video we are going to be looking at gradients and the layering system in photoshop but before we get to that let's do a little recap on what we have done so far so let me create a new photoshop document by going to create new then i'm just going to select a preset from here so i'm going to take a4 right and I am going to change the orientation of the file from portrait here to landscape by clicking on this. Then I take create. Okay, and we have something like this, right? So what have we done so far? We have basically worked with the type tool, the shape tool, transformation, and understood how to use the properties on um, panel right so let's go to window and click on properties so we have this famous properties window here or properties panel okay so how do you create text again very simple you get your type tool by pressing t on the keyboard you can click and you can write your text and when you're done with that you can manipulate your text from this properties panel here all right the next thing is you can change the color by clicking here and doing all of that you can change your color like that now working with shift you can get the shift tool by pressing letter u on your keyboard and so let me get my ellipse tool i can click and drag then hold shift on the keyboard to make that a perfect circle all right as such and then i can change its values by manipulating its appearance on my properties panel here i can manipulate the fill and then the stroke and i can also manipulate the stroke size right and the type of stroke as well if i want dotted lines or broken lines as such very important then how do you bring in images so just go to where you have the images on your pc and you can drag and drop so I can just drag and drop to Photoshop like that, right? Okay. This takes us to the next one, transformation. So this layer, the layer of this picture is currently below the layer of this shape here. So we go to our layers here, our layers panel here, and we move the layer of the picture above the layer of the shape by just clicking hold, then drag above till you see the blue highlight and you drop so we now have this big image here above the other layers okay like this so how do we transform this particular image simple get your move tool then click on show transform handles like so and you can click at any point and drag so for those using photoshop 20 21 and above when you click on any side and drag photoshop scales the image proportionally so when I, when I say scale i basically mean it, it drops or increases the size of the image proportionally it doesn't mess up the portions okay but if you're using something like photoshop 2020 and below when you click let's say here for example right and you drag it's going to do something like this it's going to mess up the proportions of what you're trying to scale up right so for those who are using um photoshop 2020 and below whenever you want to scale something it's important to hold shift on your keyboard so when you have something like this in order for you to scale it hold shift on your keyboard before dragging like this so that it scales it proportionally both length and height at the same time okay if you don't hold shift on your keyboard Photoshop is going to mess up the proportions like this, which is something you don't want to happen. All right. Then when you're done transforming, you can click on accept. So transformation is just basically you, uh, for a start now, it's just basically you scaling your, your image up and down, right? So you could do the same thing with uh, shapes as well. You can transform shapes. So let's come to the shape here get your transform handles and you can transform the shape like this you can do the same thing too so let's accept you can do the same thing to text here you can transform text as well
like this okay so you can transform any object on your screen right as long as that object is on the layer you can transform that okay i'm sure that makes sense so i'm going to do this too then let's come back to the shape so let's get started with what we currently have to do today okay so we have seen how to draw shapes right so we have drawn this shape here let's get our properties panel so we go to windows then go to properties like this now if we want to change the color of this shape here right we can just double click on this little square or this little box here double click there and we have our color picker which pops up and we can change the color to whatever color we want okay and accept that so this color here is called a solid color because it's just a single color right this color here it's just one color okay so if we come back here under properties we click on fill so for those using photoshop 2020 and below you're not going to see these names here fill and stroke you are just going to see two boxes the first one represents fill and the second one represents stroke so if you point on the boxes and and with photoshop is going to show you a title indicating what that particular box is for like if i point on this one it shows me set shape stroke type okay so let's go to the first one which is for fill and if we click on that we now have these boxes here so we have one two three and four okay so this first one is to totally take away the fill so if i click on this my shape now has no fill okay if i click on the second one is to give my shape a solid color what we have been um seeing so far just giving your shape one color okay this second one is to give your shape a solid color then this third one is to give your shape a gradient so what is a gradient a gradient is just basically you transitioning from one color to another so we have something like like this so these are gradients okay you're transitioning from one color to another so let me get back to how i got to this so click on fill whenever you on whenever you click on fill you have you always see these four options up in these four little boxes here the first one here is to have no color on your shape so you click on no color your shape basically has no color the next one here when you click on this you have solid color click on that and you can give your shape a solid color by selecting a color from here or by clicking on this multicolored box here and selecting your color like that okay then the third one here is for gradient so we want to give our shape a gradient so we click on this and we now have something like this so notice that the options down here change based on which of these four items to select so when i select this no color it has changed back to this when i select solid color we have this right then when i select gradient all of this down here it totally changes to give me options related to gradient okay now when you have a gradient i have made mention that a gradient is just basically us transitioning from one color to another color as you guys can see it okay like here we are transitioning from this particular value here from this blue to this other version of blue and we have something like that all right now you see it, it gets soft somewhere at the middle like that okay so how do you change this default on um, black to white gradient so again let's go back to our fill like so and you are going to see first firstly you guys are going to see um these folders here which have default gradients so if i click on if i open up this blue folder how do you open up this folder just click on this drop down here click on it and you can open this up okay so these are some gradients that come with photoshop if you click on that you see you can change the value to whatever value you want like that so we have a gradient from a light blue to a thicker version of blue like that so if i take red you see some commonly used red gradients okay and if i try green and i'm sure you guys get the idea if i try oranges we have this so these are some gradients that come by default with um photoshop so we are not going to use this for now i'm going to show you how to totally create your own custom gradient okay 
So how do you create your own custom gradient? Um, look, I'm sure you guys see this um, big gradient editor dialog here. This one here, we you actually see the gradient itself, right? So just click on it once. When you click on it once, you have this window which opens up like this. So let me close the window back and come back here. So I'm on my move tool, right? I can move this shape around. So how do I change the gradient of this shape? So I'll come here, click on this. In case you had a solid color, then you must have you must have this active. Okay, this second one here. But if you want to add a gradient, then you click on this gradient here, like this, okay? And how do you change a gradient of this shape? So you will see this dialog box here, which basically has the color, the current um, gradient, like here we have from black to white. So we have black to white here. So just click anywhere on this dialog box here. This is what we call the gradient editor dialog. So you click on that and you have a window which is going to pop up like this. Okay. So when you have this window like this to change this gradient, notice we have um, the colors here are black, then we have white here, right? So on this um, gradient editor dialog here, we have some stops below here and above here. Notice we have this stop here. This is what we call a stop. This grid, so um, things at the corners here, we call them stops. So we have a stop here below and a stop above. We have a stop down here and a stop above. So if we point or if we hover on this stop here, it tells us color stop. So if you want to change this black color here, you have to double click on this stop to change that color. Okay. Same thing here, if you want to change this white color here, this one here, you have to double click on this stop below, not the one above. So if you want to change the color, the colors of ingredients, you have to click on double click rather on the stops below. So if I double click on this one, I'll have a dialog to change this color. If I double click on this one, I'll have a dialog to change this one. So let's start with the black. So if we point here and double click on it, we now have this dialog as such. So we can change the color to what spark color we want. Okay. So let me get this color like this. And I think, okay. So if I come now down here, I can double click as well and take a different color like this okay and i take okay so again how do you change the color of this gradient you double click here on this top at the bottom to change the color to whatever color you want like such then to change this next color here you double click here and you can play around the colors as you want to and take okay so if you think that's okay for you you can now click on OK. But before that, let me show you what these other um, stops up here do. So these stops up here basically play around with the opacity of this particular color. So what's the meaning of opacity? Opacity just basically says transparency. OK, opacity just basically the transparency. Do you want this color to be transparent? So if you want this red color here to be transparent, for example, just click on this one, click on it once. And when you click on it, notice we have this um, options here change. So if I click on this one once here, this options down here change, okay? If I click on this one here once, now you notice these options here have changed as well. So if I click on this top down here once, this options here change. Click on this top here once, you notice the options here have changed. And we have something called opacity. So if I click on this drop down and I drop the opacity, notice it becomes transparent and we can now see the white background behind, all right? So I just had to show you that for now, but we don't need an opacity. Okay. We are going to come back to gradients in a future um, lesson. So I think this gradient is okay. So let's click on okay like that. And we now have our gradient successfully created. Okay. So just to recap, how do we create this gradient? So let me create another um, shape. So I'm going to create a rectangle. So let's have this rectangle like this. Now, when I draw this rectangle, it's going to be by default a gradient because Photoshop remembers our settings, right? So how do you change this gradient? You go to properties here, then go to fill. Then you notice that we have gradients already selected here. So come to the gradient editor dialog, click on it once, and we have our gradient editor like so. And we can double click on this stop down here, this icon here. So stop, we double click on it and you can change this to any color you want to change that to. So select that, then the second one, 
let's get something like yeah like this okay like this and we are happy with that you can take okay so we now have these two um shapes with the gradients and if you want to change the stroke you can just come here give it a stroke color then maybe increase the value like this and if you don't want the stroke at all just click on stroke and you click on this no stroke icon here okay now your strokes can also either be a solid color by clicking on the second one or can be graded as well so as i said when you click on either this view or the stroke um options here you always have these four icons here the first one is for no color second one is for a solid color which just basically says a single color and the third one here is by gradient so we can give our stroke a gradient so if you want to give our stroke a gradient we can click on this gradient icon here then click on this gradient dialog here and we can also change the colors and give our stroke a gradient so then take red then i'll take another color here i'd say blue like this I take ok and get my move tool so you see we are giving this up our shape here the fill is a gradient and the strokes it is a gradient as well right so we can really get creative about this yeah so i just had to show you guys how gradients work okay i'm hoping so far so good that's okay and gradients do not really change anything not really make the shape any special shape because let's say we as we have created this rectangle here we can still manipulate things as we have manipulated before like we can still add roundness to the corners and stuff like that all right i'm hoping um that makes sense so that's how you um create gradients with your shapes then there's something i would like to show you guys again let me just delete these shapes here now how do you fill up the canvas with a particular color the canvas with a particular color so one simple way is to get the rectangle shape here right and just draw above the entire canvas like that then you can give it a color that's one with our turn off the strokes then i'm going to give it a particular color all right something like this click on that and we now have something like this all right and the next thing you're supposed to do is to lock this layer so that it does not move like now we can easily move this on um, shape away right so how do you lock up this background here just simply click on the object that's the rectangle in this case then come up here and you see this little lock path lock icon at the top here all right just click on that it's on the left of feel where you have feel 100 percent it's on the left of it this part now let's click on it and when you click on it you notice that this layer here now has this part lock icon on it like so right so you cannot you can no longer move this layer right i hope that makes sense okay so that's one way on how to change your background color so notice we have just created a shape above our original background here and we have locked up that shape okay and um in case you want to unlock the shape like now we have locked this layer here right so in case we want to unlock this layer here what do we do simple just click on this icon here this padlock icon so if you click on it it's now unlocked and you can move it around okay so let me just delete this so that's one way um, of creating a background of changing your background in photoshop the second way is this so just come down here so we have our layers on uh, here so for those of you whose interface looks a little bit different so let me just go to windows go to workspace and re reset essentials so for most of you your interface is going to look like this okay but from the first video i told you guys you can easily close up all of these things we are not using right by just clicking and dragging outside and you take close okay click and drag outside and you take close like that so that's what i've done i just basically closed up all of my um uh, windows or the panels i'm not really using okay press all of this up then the one i, I really use is properties so i'll drop parts outside first then this entire um, column here 
is meant for layers, channels, and parts. So that's how I set mine up. Then I'll just bring these properties here, click and drag, and point on this little column here till I see this blue highlight here, like such. Not this one, not this one, but this little one here. And I'll drop, okay, like this. So this is how we set up my own interface or my workspaces. Now, how do you create a background color here? If you don't want to create a shape that covers the entire screen, very simple. So come down here and you see these icons here. So under your layers, under layers here, just come down here and you see these icons here. From the right, you have the recycle bin. From the left, you have um, a create new layer icon. You have the next one, you have create new folder icon. And the next one, you have um, what we put over on it. It's called create new field or adjustment layer. Okay, just point on it. This small one here, point on it. Um, it's kind of divided into two. You have a, a black side up and you have a white side down here. So click on it and you have all of these options here. So the one you want to take is solid color. Okay. Click on solid color and you can change the color to whatever color you want. So let's take this color here. And when we are okay with that and take okay, it now creates um, a fill color, which basically fills our entire background like that. Okay. And you can decide to lock this up as well. Right. So what if you want to create a gradient background instead? It's very simple. So let me just delete this as well. So how do I delete this layer here? You can just right click on the layer and you can take delete. So let's see if I find to delete. Um, right click on layer and take delete layer at the top here. Then you can take yes. So what if I want to create a gradient la layer, not a, a solid color layer. So again, click on this adjustment layer icon down here, then Instead of taking solid color, click on gradient, right? Then we have our famous of gradient color picker. Then just click on this uh, gradient dialog here, right? One, just click on it, not the drop down, not this drop down. Click on it here, properly here, not this drop down. So just click here. You now have this our gradient editor, and you can always change your colors up, right? So if I dig red like this, and if I come to this one, Take something like this. Now, the reason why this is not showing up the, the color I've taken is because here we have a, an opacity of zero. So we click on this top and we bring it back to 100%. So we don't want any opacity. We don't want any transparency there. Okay. We want this to be 100% like that. I'm sure that makes sense to everybody. And I can take okay. Then there's one thing um, I want to show you guys as well so we have different types of gradients okay so this one which you see a color naming from where we need from one color straight to another color it's what we call a linear gradient so if you look here we have style that you see linear okay that's what's called a linear gradient if we click on this drop down we can change that to a radial gradient where the color leaves from the center and goes outside so you can experiment with the other types of gradients okay like that so let's go back to our linear gradient or let's go to our razor gradient like this and you can decide to reverse the colors by clicking on this reverse icon here you know so the colors are reversed like that right so let me just go back to linear i think i should reverse that this makes sense now i'll take okay like that so this is how you create or you change your background totally all right so i'm going to delete this because i don't really need that for now and that's the basics of working with um with gradient in photoshop all right now let's look at our layers our layering system in photoshop okay so what's the layering system photoshop works with layers whenever i bring in a whenever i bring in an object to photoshop it's brought in as a layer let me show you what i'm talking about so if we come here and we bring in a picture so if i bring in the, uh, let's see this image here right and i accept that notice photoshop brings it in as a layer look here you're seeing it's a new layer so if i bring in another image here and i accept you see it has added a second layer this is here okay so we keep on having new layers so what if i add text now so if i add some text here 
and just turn off this um, auto curves like that. Okay, something like this. Let's make this black. All right, so I've just written this text here. Then there's something I did not show you guys last time when we were talking about um, typography. So I showed you guys how to change it, the type, the typography, or uh, rather, how to change the type itself. Okay, the type, what we really call font. I showed you guys how to change its width, like such, like such. And I showed you guys how to change the leading of that particular um, type face here. So you can change it, the size here. You can change the leading here. Okay, which basically has to be the um, spacing between lines of text. I told you guys that these two values here, vertical scale and horizontal scale, should always be 100%. Then I forgot to show you guys this one, which is called a tracking. Which is basically the space between characters okay like if i if i do this i can increase the space between the characters right so if i drop this i'm dropping the spacing between the characters sure this makes sense right so i just want to have this at zero with default default spacing like that okay so i think this looks okay right so notice that as we type this text here, a new layer has been added here. And Photoshop adds this layer based on the layer we had selected previously. So let me just read this um text layer here. Now if I have if I just click on this um YouTube icon here, notice we have the YouTube layer here selected. So if I add, if I now get my type tool and click and write some text, notice that the text layer is created above the layer that was previously selected okay now if i get my move tool and click out of the canvas so i have no layer selected right if i now create let's say a shape now so i'll click here and create a rectangle like this photoshop creates that layer at the very top because we had no layer currently selected so photoshop is going to create this new layer here at the very top okay so photoshop in Photoshop, we work with layers all the time, right? Photoshop is layer based. So, so everything you will be working with is going to have a layer. Okay. So if I bring in one more image, let's say I bring in this one. Like this. So you see, we have another layer here. Okay. And you are going to notice that this layer has some layers are above other layers why is that so like if you see here this um shape here is covering this picture here and if you look at this this picture is covering this youtube thumbnail all of this is happening because of how our layers are ordered here okay so let's now look at layer ordering how do you order layers in photoshop so if you want a layer to be above if you want an object on your on your canvas here to be above another object, right? What you just need to do is to change the order of the layer. So if I want this YouTube icon here to be above this picture here, what I need to do is to send the layer of this YouTube icon above the layer of this picture here. So if I come here, which is that this this is our YouTube um, icon here, and this is our picture here, the picture of the guide. Okay. So how do I bring this? youtube icon above this one simple just go to the youtube icon layer here and you click and drag above so click and drag point to you see the little blue highlight like search and you can allow so you have now brought this youtube icon above this particular um, picture here by just changing the order of the layers okay so you're just reordering your layers like that so let me just drop the size of this icon a little bit so i just scale that how do, how do i scale this again you just make sure you're on your move to i have your transform on um, controls active like that so i can drop this as well so i think this looks okay like this all right 
this looks fine for now so i can bring this above here i'm sure this makes sense for everybody right so that's how you order your layers you by just basically changing or moving up and down what you want to move up and down okay so let me just oh we emphasize on this we have this shape here right the only reason this shape here is above this picture on our canvas is because this shape layer here is above the layer of this picture here it works like stack of plates um a plate when you place a plate above another plate the plate above covers the plate below right yeah so if you want this picture to be above this particular shape here so what needs to do is to bring this picture either you bring this you take this picture above the shape layer or you bring the shape layer below the picture so i'm sure what i'm talking about you can just drag this picture and take above like that or let me just do ctrl z or you can bring this layer here below the picture any of them is going to work like that all right as simple as that so you can have something now like this and you can maybe probably even transform this thing something like this okay i think that that's okay then let me show you guys how to use the history um panel so if you go to windows um then you go to history you're going to have a history window that opens up like this so just point at the bottom here and use this two um uh, headed arrow you can click on it and drag down to expand it okay so it, it basically gives shows us a history of what we have done so far right so this is the very last thing we did so if you want to go back in time instead of doing ctrl z as i told you guys to go back in time ctrl z on the keyboard just click on the previous one like this and it, it takes you back in time like that okay are you saying it's taking us back in time so if you want to go back to the last thing you did just come back down here and this is the very last thing we did okay and if you scroll right up you can just come back if you click here it just takes us back to our empty canva this is where we created the document okay try this makes sense so this is called the history window and you can always find that up here when you go to windows and you take history right windows and history okay so back to our layering system so that's very simple that's how we um, order we work with layers so you can reorder layers by just clicking and dragging up and dragging down and based on how they appear on the layers panel here that's how they'll be reflected in our canvas now the next thing we want to look at is this um, little eye icon here it's what we call the visibility toggle you can basically just quickly hide um, a layer it's not like you're deleted it is still there but you just want to quickly toggle it off and see how your design looks like okay this little eye symbol here click on it it's gone click on it you have turned that off and you can click on it to bring it back turn it back on okay the next thing is how do you rename a layer very simple just point on the text of the layer so let's get this image selected like this right this is a man so we want to rename this layer here from good faces we want to rename it to man so how do, you do that just point on the text here not on the other side here no point on the text itself then you double click so when you do that you now have that blue highlight you can delete and you can give it a name so i'll just do right man like that and when you're done you press enter okay so again how do you rename a layer so let me let's rename the next one so we have this youtube thumbnail here or you, this youtube icon rather how do you rename this layer you just point on the text here point on its old name and you double click like that you can change this or change this to youtube icon like that and that's how you change the um color of a particular um sorry that's how you change the name of particular layer yeah right so far so good right any questions so far if you have questions just draw them in the comment section and we are going to look at the questions okay all right so that's how you work with layers here the next thing is this. so let's say we have this um icon here it's currently above this right but it's possible for us to drop the opacity and how do you drop the opacity very simple so we just make sure we have the layer selected then above here you're going to see opacity which is basically the same as transparency right so when the opacity is 100 percent means that your object is fully visible when you start dropping the opacity right you start introducing some transparency to it like that so we are introducing some transparency to this particular um 
this particular object here on the screen okay stuff like this all right i'm sure this makes sense okay now how can you how do you delete a layer very simple there are so many ways you can get that but in the first way just click on the select the layer then click on this delete icon at the bottom here delete and you can take yes and it's deleted okay so it's did that other icon if i want to delete this one here i'll just click on it like this then go to delete here and i take yes all right to delete this text here you can click on it now instead of going to delete you can just drag this layer and drop on the recycle bin so you click on this layer and drag drag and drop on the recycle bin and delete that for you okay i'm sure that makes a lot of sense right all right so let me just take the opacity of this one now back to a hundred percent like that okay i think so far so good that makes sense story of us so now let us look at one more thing then we get to our project for today oh um, yeah so we have these layers right so remember almost everything in photoshop comes in as layers okay and we have something called layer blend options so let's say we have this um youtube icon here right if you right click on this youtube icon at the at the corner here on the right hand side of the icon just right click on it and let's go to the very first option here which is called the blending options click on it you now have these layer style on um, dialog box which pops up okay so let me close this and show you guys what i've done so you get to go to the layer right click on it i take the very first option blend options i have this so i'm going to show you guys just two things so i'm going to show you guys how to add a stroke to this particular layer here remember this layer here represents let me close this up this layer here represents what this icon okay so if you want to add a stroke to this icon or a shadow to this icon just right click on it i take blend options so in case your own um styles here look different just click on this drop down here and you see the all of the styles here okay so the two we want to look at we want to look at this one here stroke and we also want to look at drop shadow so let's start with a stroke so if you want to add a stroke around this your youtube icon here you click on stroke here not on this little box here click on the word itself the word stroke so when you click on that word stroke now before i click notice that we have these options here right so if i click on this word stroke the options are going to change when i click on that see the options have changed to options for a stroke right so i've clicked on that and the options have changed and if you look here the stroke has actually been applied already so let's look at these options here the first one is the size of the stroke right then let's just keep and go to where we see opacity you can increase the opacity to a hundred percent so you can now fully see the opacity of the stroke like that right you can play with the size of the stroke right then you can also play with the color of the stroke so you can change your color so whatever color you want like this right so this first option is for the size of the stroke we are going to okay then this um position do you want the stroke to come from inside out or outside in so if we take outside so it, it, it grows and goes outward like that okay if i click back here and take inside it grows inward do you see the stroke when you increase the size of the stroke is growing inward so let's go back to outside so let's we want it to grow outward like that okay then for now just allow blend mode to normal opacity you can play around the opacity to what value you want okay then down here you have color so before we have color here you have field type and if you click on that drop down we have three options we have color gradient and pattern so if you click on gradient it's basically what i showed you guys pre just previously click on this dialog box and you can change the gradient okay to something like this so also where i want to change it so okay and when you're done you can accept that take okay like that and you have something like this now so i've just basically played around with the gradient so to give a layer you can give a picture you can give anything to photoshop a stroke by just coming to the blend options then you have this window opened up 
then you go to stroke click on stroke here then you have this like that all right so for those of you who cannot preview that's who cannot see the changes you're making make sure you have this preview icon selected okay if it's not selected click on it and it's selected so you can see the changes you're making in before you accept by clicking on okay all right so that's how you work with um stroke so let's just change this field type back to color right so that you have a single color okay so i'll just take something like let's say blue right and you can drop the opacity a little bit yeah like that so that's how you add a stroke to any uh, layer any layer yeah the next one i want to show you guys so let's just take okay okay so when you take okay you now have the the effect added under the layer here this is the layer here right so you have an effect added under here it does not put a new layer for it just adds it under here all right and we have this so if you want to edit this stuff here you can edit it by double clicking on the effect itself so if you want to edit this just double click on the stroke here click twice on it and it's going to open up this uh, dialog box here and you can edit that up so for those of you who cannot see this here is because of this little arrow here this drop down here so you have something like this so you have to expand the drop down by clicking on it once then you can now see this here you can temporarily hide your effects okay and you can bring them back up so let's double click here i want us to add one more effect which is called a drop shadow so you come here and this is the option here drop shadow so click on the word drop shadow click on it and the first thing we want to do is you see the options here have changed as well right just turn up the opacity to 100 percent that's the first thing now um shadows are always cast in the opposite direction of light right so if light is coming from the top left the shadow be cast on the bottom right okay so that's where this angle here helps us so if you point if you just you can change this angle by clicking and dragging around that's how you change this angle here click and drag around so if i click here i've changed the angle okay i can now play around with the distance of the shadow so how far i want the shadow to go so let me just click on this um global light thing here for now i'm going to uncheck it so i'll click on it i don't want to select it then i can play around with um these values here and i can play around with that so i'll play around this angle here then i can now click and drag this distance here do you see see you can now see something coming up like this do you see okay like that or another way to adjust your distance and angle when you have this dialog box open here right and you're on drop shadow just take your cursor outside to the um object itself on screen i can click and drag around like this so you see it's affecting this two here the angle and the distance so you click and drag around and you have something like this i'm sure this makes sense i'll press this back and show you what i've done so i'm going to double click on this stroke here to add another um, effect which is a drop shadow i want this here then so I want to add a drop shadow, right? Just click and drag outside like that. You know, see how something like that. Okay. And you can increase the opacity if you want to. All right. So this angle and distance, you can change your values here, or you can just click and drag on the object itself on the screen. The next thing I want to show you guys is we are going to ignore spread for now and focus on size. So what size does is it blurs out your drop shadow like that. Do you see? This size has blurred out a drop shadow like this. Makes sense, right? So let me just drop the size of our distance, drop the distance into a bit, and drop the opacity as well. So we have something very subtle. Like, yeah, something like this. So my opacity is at 46%, then my distance 57 And this, so this is just these values like this. So you can turn this drop shadow off and on by clicking on this little um check mark here it's off it's on off and on so i think i like this i'm going to take okay and you now see we have how many effects we have you have two effects a stroke and a drop shadow and you can decide to turn off and on the effects anytime you want to okay turn off and on and in case you want to delete an effect just right click on the effect and you take disable layer effect when you click on that okay it disables the effect but it doesn't delete it yeah it disables it but it doesn't delete it so if you want to delete this particular effect it's very simple you can just right click on it and you can take um clear layer style 
so it clears those effects it clears all of the effects right now if you want to select a particular one just this on um, drop shadow simple just click and drag it to the recycle bin and it's gone you now see we have just stroke and the drop shadow is gone like that so you can apply this to any um you can apply what i've just shown you now the stroke and the drop shadow to any layer so i'll delete these things here and let me add a text layer here so let me see um classic restaurant for example like this right and uh so instead of going to the properties here and increasing the size from here right i can transform it now for those who are transforming please don't do this don't do things like this let me show you what i'm talking about don't do things like this this is a very bad very bad thing to do as a designer very bad thing okay you, you don't mess up the proportions of your typography you don't do that all right okay so i'm going to bring um i'll make it all caps then i'll change the font to orbitron so i want you guys to download this orbitron oh, typeface as well right and how do you download this orbitron okay i'm going to show you guys how to download this, this stuff later on so let's just pursue the design so i'm just drop this a little bit yeah, I think this looks good and um, yeah, I think this looks fine. Okay, so the first thing is how do you give this particular um, shape here, this particular text, this is not a shape, this is actually a text layer, right? How do you give this text layer here a gradient? Okay. So the, the simplest way or the, the easiest way to give this um, shape layer here a gradient is to go to the blend options because we text here you cannot go to properties and change here this is just going to be a solid color right so to give this particular text here a gradient here you have to right click on the layer here then go to blend options like this right here so so far i'll show you guys how to add a stroke so you can add a stroke to this your text here click on stroke you can change the color to let's say green for example you can increase the opacity then you can drop the size right let's say add a stroke to this color here you can decide to add the drop shadow to it like this i'm sure you guys can see the shadow already here and you can pick, play around with stuff okay so I, I don't want a drop shadow so i'll turn that off i don't want the stroke so what i want to do is i want to change this color here the color of this classic restaurant from a solid color to a gradient so what i'll do here is i'll take gradient overlay this one here so I want to overlay its current color with a gradient. So I'll click on this and I have this option that pops up now. This gradient overlay option here. Where we see our famous gradient box here, right? Just click on it and we can give it some two colors. So in, this, my, in my case here, I'll take green. Let's see. Yeah, I'll take green. Then I'll take a thick green and then I'll take a light green. That will click then. And then take a night version of green and something like that so you see you see what i was talking about right so you're transitioning from a thick a thick green like this to a light version of green like that all right does this make sense for everybody so you can take okay i take okay i mean i will now have something looking like this right then let's go back to it so you see the, the layer the uh, effect that's been added here so you can turn on this effect by clicking on this eye this toggle symbol here which is the eye right click on it you have turned that off and it brings us back to our normal black which we have under properties here okay so you can turn this on back by clicking here we now have this so we're going to make this a little bit um better so let, this is the project i want us to work on now so we have come to our project i want us to work on something like this Right, so El Classico restaurant and we have all of these things happening here. So we are likely not going to finish this project, but I want you guys to finish it because I've been showing you guys how to do everything. Okay, so far. So let's study this and see what we have. So we have this text here. 
we have a gradient, right? This takes from a thicker green to a lighter green. Then we have a stroke on the El Clasico. Same thing if you have the restaurant, we have a gradient from a thicker orange shade to kind of a yellow color here. Then we have a red stroke on it. Then we have the shape here. Then we have these circles here with the strokes. Then we clip these images to it. And notice that these shapes here have a little drop shadows on them like that, right? Then every other thing we have seen that so far. So let's get to this and work on that together. So I'll come here, remove this. And um, I have the L like that. So let's go back to it. So it's just here, it looks like that's how it looks like, right? Um, so for the type pieces I used here, which I want you guys to download is number one, we have Orbitron. So how do you download this type face? Just go to go to your browser and type Orbitron Orbitron fonts download. Right. So it's a free um Google font. Just follow this first link here. It's a free Google font. And you just click on download fonts family here. That should download for you. Deck save. Then what you need to do is you need to go to the folder. Unzip it first. Right click. Take um, extract file. Then we open it up. Like this. Open static. Select everything. Right click and take install. Okay. Right. So this is the very first one here. This first type is here. I'll be trying. Right. Then the second one, let's write our second text here. So once the restaurant like that. So this one is going to be a script typeface. So it's going to be fair prosper. Right. So how do you download fair prosper? The same thing. Just type fair prosper fonts free downloader. Okay. And it's on that dafonts.com. So just follow this first link. Then you click on this download icon here and download. And you have that downloaded like that. All right. As simple as that. Okay. So we are already adding more flesh to our design. Okay. So now, L Classical, you come here and let's see. Okay. So let's start this L Classical, right? I think the size is okay. So let's see. So for just asking what paper size am I using? So I'm basically using A4, right? So just go to print. So first of all, create a new document by going to file, go to new, then go to print here, select A4, then change the orientation from portrait to landscape so that the paper is like this, okay, landscape, not portrait. Then you can now start adding these things in. Okay. So let me adjust the size of this. So let me just give this the size of, let's see. 65 and the same looks like okay i think this looks okay for now yeah i think this looks okay for now so let's start with this l classical okay so let's take away this effect for now so everything is in black right notice we have restaurant on a different layer and l classical on a different layer so we start with l classical right click on the layer here then go to blend options we now add so once you give it a gradient overlay, like uh, like we have here, okay. So you come here, go to gradient overlay here. Then the reason why it has given us this green by default is because I deselected that. So how do you change that? Now let me show you guys something again. Right click on this overlay. I just can't and I'm going back there, just for emphasis sake. So I'm clicking on gradient overlay here. I'm not clicking on this little stuff here. I'm clicking on the text itself. When you click on the text itself this gets selected and you see the options here change okay i'll take the robust to 100 percent blend mode should be normal so in case yours is different just click on that dig normal right then the gradient here i'm going to click on the box not on this drop down click on this box here then you have this one here then you can change the colors from here okay so i'll select green then i'll take a very dark version of green then for the second color i'll take a light version of green like this okay yeah then make sure your i'll take okay then make sure it's a linear gradient all right then make sure the angle is 90 degrees so you can always change the angle to whatever value you want like this by clicking or by typing in a value here so we just want nine sync like that 
So our grid is 90. Then our scale here is 100. And everything can be left like that. Okay. So for this, we have added that. Then let's add the next thing. So we want to add a stroke to it. So we click on stroke. So we want to add the stroke here. Right. And to get that added, you can just uh, select color and let's give it yellow. That kind of yellow ish. Let's increase the size and see. Okay. Yeah, I think this almost looks like it. I think the size is too much, so I'll drop this a little bit. I think I've seen a problem, so let's just accept this for now. I want to change the weight of this, my L Classic cool here. So now it's black, I meaning it's really, really thick. So let's try bold and see. Bold, and let's try submit bold. Okay, I think submit bold makes more sense. Yeah. Submit bold makes more sense, so. Yeah, head board. That's too thick, so semi board makes more sense. Then you can decide to make it slanted uh, by. Where's that stuff? Let's see. Okay, I think this this tip's okay. Yeah, so I'm just trying to replicate this design I worked on some time ago. All right, yeah, I think this 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 looks fine. This looks fine so far. Right then, oh, uh, that's so that's basically for this first one. Okay, so I've added. In drop I added this um graded overlay and uh the need to stroke on it. Let's do the same thing to restaurant here. So just right click on it, then options, then once to give it this gradient as well. So you go to gradient overlay here, click on it. The first color should be kind of orange orange color so let's see take it down again okay we want the color at the bottom it to be yellow instead not orange let's take this up to so have something like that then take okay and change this one to something I like bring so I'll drop this down here I think I'll take a darker column okay I think that that's that's beginning to look like it all right yeah something like this then you just need to now add um, a stroke to it so give it a stroke so I think okay then give it a stroke of like red or something like that yeah the precise with struggling it's a bit then the last thing is to give it a drop shadow so i click on drop shadow and i'm going to set everything to zero here i'll set my angle to 129 i'll increase the distance a little bit like that so looking like something here so it's just going to be something very subtle not really noticeable okay not so much so I'll just have my bus at 100 for now let's see so my Distance is at, um, let's see. Okay, I think it works for me. Then I would drop the bus to something like 25%. So let's see how it looks like without and with the drop shadow. So this without, with. So I'm just clicking on this toggle icon here without, then with. Yeah, something such to that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, you can decide to increase let's see okay, i think so far so this looks okay so far yeah so your assignment is to complete this design right yep that's your assignment complete this design so yeah, if there are any questions you do let me know okay so let's just keep on going now let's see so where do you find these images how do i download these images very simple, you can just go on Google and type what you're looking for. So in this case, I'm, I'm looking for our um, let's in the Olay I'm planting. Type in the Olay I'm planting pictures, right? And you can put images and you find a lot of pictures there. Okay. 
This is the one we currently have. This one here. This one here. So this is it here. All right. So what you you're basically supposed to do is to get a shape tool that you draw on two or three circles, right? This is the first one. You can duplicate this by holding Alt on your keyboard. Click and drag like this. Then you drop the size to something like this. Okay, then you duplicate this one as well. So I have something like this. And you make sure that these other two here are both the layer of the layers of these two here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I change the color of this one to red, make sure that the layer of these two here are both, right? Like this. So that is really okay. You can now drag and drop your images like this. So I'll do that really quick because I think we're already running out of time. Drop this here. And what do we do? Very simple. As as most of you guys have guessed already. We create a clipping mask. So I've dropped this picture here directly above the layer of this um shape here so that I can just come to the picture here where I click and take create clipping mask like that. Okay. And I can always transform it by doing this. Alright. I'm sure this makes sense. So I want it to fill up the entire um shape, right? Like that. Okay. Now notice that um well, anyways, that, that makes sense already. Yeah. So I want you guys to work on this and uh, let's see. So I'll turn off the so I'll click on this shape here and turn off the stroke. I don't really need the stroke here. Or maybe I need it. Yeah, I need the desk thick white, for example. I think I need the desk thick white. Then increase the size. Okay. Now there's something about the stroke of the default um stroke of shapes here. It always creates that it always creates it inside like that. Which is something I don't really like. So you can change that by clicking on this drop down here. Just get to one here. And you take the last option here. Which basically takes it, creates this, this shape, the stroke outward. So let's take a drink on like that. Yes. So it creates the stroke outwards like that. Okay. But in this case here, our stroke is on white. Then we have a little drop shadow. So. Let's give it a stroke back white. Then you come here, right click on the shape, tick name options, and give it a drop shadow. Like that. So you can now really see, you can clearly see it now. Um so I need, I'll increase this um size so it's a little bit blurred out. Then I can drop the shot the opposite to be. So you have something sort of like that. Right. So this is what you're going to do to the other um, things to so have this design done all right so i i'm sure this is going to be very straightforward design for most of you guys uh, i'll show you guys how to change your background color so you can have black then this thing here is just a white circle this thing let's see here very big circle right then on, on the behind this you have a, a picture there and i just drop the opacity of that particular picture right then these other things here are very straightforward things you guys can do okay so um i think that's that for this particular video if you have any questions drop the questions on um in the comment section all right so for the resource of this particular class i'm going to share those resources as usual in the description of the video all right thank you guys for joining in and as usual if you have questions do all to answer questions and see you guys in the next video